Wait, is Daphne nearby? She should come in the chair now. Daphne, move up to the chair. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to IG Live. And we just got back from Paris yesterday. We did. Yesterday? Or the no. Two days ago. ago. And um, we spent a lot of time with each other. More time than usual. <laughs> okay. So today's IG Live is going to be really good. Also because we have a guest that... So, wait, come say hi real quick. So, I'm Daphne from Atlanta, hi. by way of Mexico, is in town, and she DM'd me early this morning. I was like, come down and be in some of the outfits. So, <laughs> go sit back down on the side, and I'm going to break you up, because we're going to break down your whole outfit. All right. Um, let me pull up the questions. Okay. So, today's discussion is about... What do you wear for specific events? I asked you guys to tell me where it is that you're going in your life that you stumble and you have issues and you want to figure out what to wear. And I received like at least a thousand responses of very specific event. What I was able to do very quickly though is group each one of these events by um, overall characteristics and the problems that you have with them. And we saw very quickly that there were probably like six or eight yeah. categories emerging. And the good news is, is that all of these wildly different events, seemingly so just by the way you wrote them out, could easily be condensed into a couple different pockets. And that's great news because what that means is when you yourself go into your own closet, you're not trying to do a closet for the potential thousands of events that will come your way in your life, what you need to do is have a closet that is arranged that will allow you to partake in all of these events yeah. without having a, you know, a shit freak and wondering what it is you're going to wear and then go out and have to buy something new. So I'm going to um, start with the first classification. Maybe you can read some things out because sure. um, I can't see anything without my glasses. The perfectly imperfect. Perfectly imperfect. Okay. So um, I'm going to say real quickly that the overarching theme around this group was that the whole vibe is that you want to be very eased out and chill. This is for your everyday life, mm -hmm. but this is the life where you want to absolutely have style and look appropriate in the moment that you're in. So what are some of the examples that people gave here? Lots of moms, lots of moms figuring out school, after school activities, sports, especially in the fall, pick up. Because um, pick up and drop off is a thing. You don't know this yet, but <laughs> it is absolutely a thing that you want to totally. be stylish for, but not too. Um, long haul flights, which we can speak to. Yep, just did. Okay. We just did. Um, visiting family in a very casual environment, um, which I guess is coming up really soon. Yep. Um, and also, just if you have nowhere to go, but you like want to look put together, which is all of us. Yeah, a lot of you guys, as you um, have moved from having this bifurcated wardrobe where you know, you don't have that wardrobe anymore that is like all these like specific events in your life, but you've moved to this one wardrobe. What you're finding is that more and more when you're just walking the dog, which some of you wrote, I'm just out walking the dog, that even in those events in your life, you still want to feel like yourself and like you have style. So what we did here is instead of like focusing so much on all these exact perfect outfits, what I want to do is go through with you the different tools in your closet that you are going to pull out whenever any of these absolutely normal everyday life occasions occur. So again, these are pieces of clothing that the overriding adjective here is that they are chill and then classic and modern. But chill is like at the top of it. And it doesn't mean that it can live in the absence of classic and modern. Right. But chill is the number one consideration. It's the highlighted one. Exactly. So, why don't we first bring out Daphne because... Welcome to the show. <laughs> I mean, Daphne literally walked in, surprise guest, because I just DM'd you like two hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> so you did not get dressed for this. And ironically, 
almost like exactly the same thing. Um, but what were you doing today that made you put this up? Oh, I was just walking around. I was going to go maybe a museum or something, mm -hmm. but I wanted something comfortable. Yeah. So this is what I picked for today. And I can also take this to a flight and feel yeah. dressed and, but nice, you know, like not any sweet pad or anything. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because you still, like even though you're just running around, you still want to feel like yourself. You still want to have style. And I think that this is where, when you've got these things in your closet that like, for us, like this is also a suit for an office if you were to put on a heel. Yeah. So if you were traveling for business, you could immediately get off the plane and go into a meeting. But if you don't have a lot of meetings to go to, if you don't have a lot of conferences, this is just perfect for your everyday life and being super pragmatic because you like not overthinking the shoe is critical here because the the whole idea around chill if you think about it is the idea that you want things to be perfectly imperfect because we're not perfect people we're not even trying to show that at all we're not trying to fool you and so I think that that just ease and that imperfection is what makes something like the perfect outfit so i would say your sneakers here yeah just the ones that i brought them um, that that's it like maybe if i go out later at night yeah i might change to a loafer or something like that yeah. so i can feel more put together but yeah i'm fine and i think this is where it is so key not to try and match the shoe to the outfit you know i just think the way that you've not matching it is so much better than trying to match it. And um, someone had sent me a quote from, um, uh, what's her name? Oh, Alison Bornstein, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Alison Bornstein, mm -hmm. uh, saying, is it true, she has a quote about, grab the shoes in your closet that you think absolutely won't work, and oftentimes you'll find that they do. And that's true. Yeah. That is a truism. And that's also a good way too to force yourself to try new things. So, cool. Thank you. Um, so I'm also the poster child for this. So when we said chill is number one here in this, chill is where your fabrications when you're going for this kind of effortless stuff of dropping off the kids, going to walk the dog, etc. This is where the fabrications have to be chill. Like no matter what, if you are walking around in a beautiful four-ply silk pajama set or whatever I just don't believe you that you happen to like I think that there's just a nanny hiding in your Birkin or something. <laughs> nanny's hiding in your Birkin visualize that visualize that and that's the vibe that you are given because I would love a four-ply silk pajama suit but that's when you're out for evening and you're totally. working the chill totally. secondary but chill first means that all of the fabrications need to have that chill vibe, but they are still classic and modern. So this is where your um, blazer here, this obviously is a more put together style, but it is in that knit fabric that is like a sweater. So I can be sleeping on an airplane or just running to the mailbox and you won't think that I look crazy. I'm also wearing the Calder knit yes. sweatpants. So this is another element where chill comes first, it is a sweatpant material, but then it is the structure here that gives it the extra something. It makes it extra look put together. And because I went with just the white sneaker here, then mixing it up with the dorky, like dark sock here, to me just gives it like the good nerd vibe. Um, and so the other elements that we put in here for just super chill but put together is having the sweatshirt that is always ready to go. So this is not, you know, having the ripped up sweatshirt or something. This is when you're really doing these easy elements, then you want the pieces that are oddly refined but in these easy fabrications. Then the Scotty joggers here, this is where all of the um, ultra suede comes into play and it can be snapped up in the bag. But again, these easy fabrications that are put together are
are when you will feel very, very good in your most casual life. So where people make the mistake is for their casual life, they fill it up with these kind of like relaxed fabrications and like just like a stretched out sweatshirt right. style or just a regular jogger pant. And that's where you tend to build, you know, basic fabric, basic style, basic. I think um, also like basic, I mean, like we have a variety of like neutrals up here. I don't think that that means, like you're wearing all navy, um, like I'm not wearing neutrals, but I do feel like that's kind of like the core kind of foundation. I'm just like, it doesn't, have, like this is a great pant, but like yeah. it doesn't all have to be black. Like no. navy, brown, like we, I feel like we've really been pushing kind of those still very, very like colors yeah. but that are a bit non-traditional. Yeah those first so when I've had the color when we talked about color theory in the color wheel the very first ring are hardcore saturated neutrals navy black tan white and gray but then that next ring are those colors that have a lot of depth and when you look at them it's, it's much deeper than just a regular khaki or something totally. like that. So Doing this pile on of those neutral colors in your closet is key. But the other key is, and this is really, really important here. So you can see this, I'm gonna move this up close so you can see it. So right here, the key is every single one of these elements is a different texture. And that is really critical. So when you're building up your more casual wardrobe, having the varied textures is what is going to make you feel really chic and smart every time. So if you've got the cashmere already covered, then know that you need something in the sweatshirt fabric. And if you have that covered, you need the t-shirt fabric. So it's kind of like nailing all your neutral colors, nail your fabrications, and make sure that you have those key styles that have enough design point of view to them, but they are chill, 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 first and foremost, okay? Then I promise you, like whether you're going to the grocery store or wherever, you're gonna always be set. Okay, what's, um, while you're bringing up the next group, I'm gonna just throw this jacket on Daphne. Have you tried this one yet? No, no. no. So, <laughs> so what size do you normally? Uh, small. Small, okay, yeah. so this is the small. Yeah, do it over your jacket first. I love it. <laughs> it so was good. love at first sight, like kind of thing. Like, uh, and um, we're are we the same? We're the same height, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Sorry, guys, you're not getting too much variation here, but we are the same height, and this looks great on you. So you can That's see where it heads. It's also probably helpful that you have it on over the Liam because you can see the Liam length is coming out a little bit longer. So for those of you with a Liam, you can see that this size small is just a little bit shorter in the front, but then in the back, it comes down all the way. And this is a medium Liam, so oh. like the small would like be perfect. I'm, I'm curious, why did you do a medium? Like, were you, did you buy it on the other was the other way So that's the thing, you guys. When you, um, sometimes when people write to me, they're like, I got a medium and I think I should have gotten a small. <laughs> the world does not move between those two no, sizes. No, no. Like, it's so barely perceptible when you are wearing oversized clothing. If everything was really structured and had seams, and yes, for sure, that is something to, uh, consider but when it's oversized like that it's easy to do okay oh. I'm gonna check your bag before you go okay. <laughs> <laughs> to see if number one if you have like what, a Danny hiding in the Birkin no, it's, uh. she have Birkin with her. okay so this uh, next group was a lot around either first dates or um, well I'm gonna talk about the first date part first so and no, actually, I'll bring up the second two. And this was about uh, proper events celebrated at home. Okay. Thanksgiving being the most. Got it. So your first date yeah. is just on Thanksgiving. <laughs> no. Some <laughs> <I don't laughs> want. Good luck Hi, to everyone. Hi, my whole family. 
Um, so the idea though, especially around these first dates, the idea around the first date, is that you want to wear something that is is vague enough that if the, if the, the person shows up and he's, or she is taking you to, I don't know, the super fanciest restaurant or whether they're taking you to like Blue Smoke Barbecue, it still works. It still works. Because nothing's worse than when like, you, the, the door opens and the person picking you up is like in the polar opposite. Oh yeah, and you're like, oh, I thought we were going to that restaurant. You know, it's the restaurant by the same name and it's totally different. Totally off, awesome. right? So this is like what I would call head your bed dressing. It's also um, the thing that you don't want to look like you're trying too hard. Totally. But that you try. Yeah. Because it is a date, but... And I think it's also yes. really important, you know, that you need, like, this is when you, you need to be so comfortable. Yeah. Like, just like in who you are, like this is your, you know, impression of yourself to your first date, to your exactly. family, whatever, on Thanksgiving. Like, if you're not comfortable, it's going to show. Yeah. So, first date, this whole like hedging your bets, being able to hedge your bets. I, the reason why I put the um, Thanksgiving at home in here is I felt like the bottom line of what the criteria is for the items was similar. So what I thought is that the idea is so that you're ready for anything, that when you have a more rich luxury fabric that it is always in something chill. And when you have a chill fabric, it is always in something amped up. Totally. So you're actually um, wearing the poster child exactly. of that. Yeah. Because <laughs> the mohair is obviously a very chill fabric, but here you're wearing it in the really saturated mm -hmm. color. It's got the point of view, and you put on the earrings with it, so you've got the extra bed. But then you've got the richness of the liquid drape fabric. This one is coming out for resort guys. It's a fabric we've done in the past. But you've got a very rich fabric here, but then it's in a very casual totally. style. Totally. Matt has a question. Do tell about your glasses. Oh, these are caddies, and um, and they're really dirty. Um, and I bought these at uh, Cake Pleat in Austin, Texas, and I know that she sells them online, and I know that Hampton Clothing sells them online too. They're good, but really dirty. Um, okay, so. Obviously here we've got the Celia drape. And this is why we've got this jogger in the line because if someone picked you up for a day, doesn't matter where you're going, you know right now, fancy restaurant, blue smoke, smoke barbecue, you are good to go. And this is also the perfect pant for everyone's Thanksgiving dinner if you're in the United States. Although we did Thanksgiving in Hong Kong. Actually Matt, I did it with your parents in Hong Kong. But um, this is perfect for that. And the reason why it's perfect is because you are at home with friends, you want to be chill, but it is an event, it's Thanksgiving, it's a proper holiday, so you want something that gives a nod to that. So this is perfect for that. Um, I think the personal graphic tee yeah. is like really great for a first date. I think it's a good conversation starter. Yes. And then also, like, it just immediately makes you comfortable at home, like, whether you really like your family, whether you really don't like your family. But on the first date with this, I do need to know I'm going to blue smoke. Yeah, but I think um, also, like, you could be wearing this and, like, a very, like, ha like nice trouser Dickie? and a little heel. A Dickie. Yeah. And actually, that's why Dickies are really yeah. good, too. Like, those Dickies, like, you just throw it on top. And it immediately, like, changes the whole vibe. And then exactly. you can take it off, like, when you're chowing down. <laughs> Like, exactly. whether you're at Blue Stone Barbecue or eating turkey at home. Um, and I think, all, I think you know, these t-shirts, obviously, we sent on the runway, and, you know, we have a personal connection with um, Amy Billy, Billy and, <laughs> and Amy Gravit and her team. But I really think that, you know, immediately it just kind of, like, calms you a little bit if there's something that, like, is really familiar that, you know, is close to your heart. Yeah, so here, if I had on Baby Billy, and then you've got on here, and then you've got this, and then I'm going to have a blazer on with it, and then totally. I'm good to go yeah. on my day. Absolutely. Um, 
another perfect item here. So we talked about these elements that are hedging your bets. So this is one where if someone was just taking you to a movie or to a really fancy party or something, like I would just throw on. I mean, I take that shirt everywhere. Everywhere. Like, everywhere. So this is the Mercerized Knit. You know Sarah and I have literally worn it everywhere. And, um, and I know that I think we only have like two sizes left online. But we do have this coming for resort in red and a yellow and a neutral color. But this is perfect because everyone, like you need this in your closet because it is not, it's just, it's not t-shirty. Exactly. But and it's that, not that's too. The, that's the key is that it's like a really familiar casual silhouette in a luxe fabric. Like if you were wearing literally like a long sleeve cotton t-shirt with these pants, it would be so different. It would be a totally different vibe. And so like, when we're talking about like Thanksgiving at home, you're gonna wear this sweater, this pant, and then you can have the furry slipper, except for the one woman who wrote to me about the brother-in-law that doesn't allow any shoes in the house. That might have been so my you sister. So you can wear TV socks. <laughs> that might have been my sister. Like that's, a, that's a nice right. little um, song. Yeah, exactly. So, but this slide is perfect for that time. And then, if you're going on date night, it's kind of like you can wear the blue here. So you're like all head to toe. So all of your rules about one ton or none and everything, they all apply. Mm -hmm. But it really is dressy fabric, casual style, or casual style, dressy fabric. Wait, that's the same thing. Dressy fabric, casual, casual style. style, or casual fabric, fabric dressy, dressy style. style. Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, if you're still not sure, we just always revert back to a without fail. Um, the black denim Rancuzzi is that for me. I yes. literally, like, if I'm not sure what the dress code is or, like, I don't know what I want to wear, everything always goes back to this jean. The black um, wash makes it better for a, like, more organized event, like a family yes. get-together or a date, it's like a little bit more elevated and polished. And literally, if you wore this with a t-shirt and a blazer, if you wore this with the mercerized wool and a little furry flat, like. Yeah, that, that black wash is perfect. Totally. It's perfect for that because yes, Thanksgiving in a lighter color denim. It's too casual. It's too like, casual, it's outside. Yeah. But this, with what you're wearing, like the sweater, the like this is perfect. Catch me on Thanksgiving. For sure, and then. If you're going on a date, maybe you're wearing like a weird sheer black hosiery, totally. these shoes, this, and then, I mean. Honestly, I do wear this everywhere, so that's why it's. Like it's very easy, and then you put the focus like on the earring or totally. something like that. Yeah, so that's it, guys. That is a really easy one. And again, you saw you've got sweatsuiting, you've got mohair, you've got t-shirting, sweatpants. Celia Drape and the Mercerized Wool. So, and those are all in your neutrals again. So starting out with those core neutrals and building up on that range of fabrics. So this is where like, if you love the Calder sweatpant, that's great, we love it too, but you don't go buy three of them. Think about it, if you're loving that shape, maybe you wanna have that shape in a denim, maybe uh -huh. you wanna have it in a fabrication like this, and then a sweatpant. So make sure you get that range of fabrications in your closet because that is absolutely what keeps a lot of you guys like just spinning your wheels in the mud. Okay, next group. Let me see what that is. Um, oh, you know what we need for this. Can we get Brittany? Up Welcome here? to the stage. Yes. So, and um, can we switch out to the, oh, sorry. We need the, the work crew. Hey, Brittany, come up. Sorry guys, we're gonna. Hey Bryn. Sorry, we need to switch the groups too. Um, so I'm gonna bring Brittany out here first because this next group is about professionalism and looking creative and going to any type of work event. So Brittany's gonna come for it. So Brittany is our new head of PR and we introduced her last week. And so this is where everyone had five million questions. Okay. 
about, okay, so these are literally the questions, and then you'll see like why this is so perfect, what you're wearing. So people are touring a high school, and you'll see like this is not all just work related, these are different things. So some are touring the high schools with their teenagers, like I guess trying to get their kids like, into like, like applying or like No, which like I mean it sucks for you because yeah, like college is hard enough. So you too can do this one day if you choose. Um, the people are going to a convention for doctors and they are the speaker. They're going to um, corporate uh, conferences. They're going to be in a courtroom. They have to present to an industry body, like to, likely to be only females present. They are at a conference at a university where a young creative pragmatist woman amongst older male professors. Um, they have a chemistry meeting with a potential client. Is that a way of like seeing if you're like vibing with a new client? I guess that so. is right. Because yeah, yeah. I don't think I they're like chemists. Chemistry. I love that. I know. <laughs> I forgot. Forget so informational. <laughs> Got it. Um, very important meetings. Want to not feel out of place next to a man in a full suit and tie. Professional panel at a conference. Okay, so a lot of these work things involved travel. They involved you wanting to feel um, put together, but not like you're play acting. Put together, but appropriate, and put together, but definitely like yourself. So this is about being yourself in these most likely either business environments or environments where, to be honest, you are being judged. Yeah. You know, you're taking your kid to high school, they're judging you. You're, you want to make a good first impression. Exactly. <laughs> this is not about like, hey, fuck you, whatever. You know, like, you do care and, and that, and caring is appropriate and um, just at different levels at different times. So the easiest cheat for this is the any blazer. of the tropical wool, yeah. the blazer here. And so your biggest cheat is the tropical wool yeah. and then the head to toe tonal dressing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm layered because it's cold. But yeah, I have the just a plain black sweatshirt and then the jeans yeah. and threw this blazer on almost as like a coat today too. Yeah. As like an additional layer. The, which is what's great yeah. about you know, the the reason why we like oversize is not it goes well beyond just the look but there's a tremendous amount of functionality to it so you yeah. can put it on over a sweatshirt yeah. and it can suffice as your outer wear and so do you uh what size are you wearing this is the large the large and the blazer yeah. okay and then you're wearing the double waisted, double -waisted denim yeah and so what's great about this double waisted denim if you are in these work environments and you get the opportunity to be very dressed up and then maybe you're you know, you've got more casual moments or you've traveled. What is great about the double-waisted denim is it actually works like a corset feature. Yeah. It's not like double-waisted just for the sake of like, oh, let's see how many waistbands we can put on ourselves. Like it really does create this corset look, which the benefit of the corset look is, it's just put together. It's, it's absolute, it gives depth to the outfit and I think one of the key things that you're wanting to communicate at these events is even as like super posh or super smarty pants some of them are, we know that one of the best attributes you can offer someone right now, I would argue always, is to be a creative thinker. And so this to me makes me happy that we hired you. I'm like, yay. <laughs> and I think the, the dark wash is also elevates it, makes it less casual. For sure. Yeah. Yes. Like if you were going to those meetings, you would not. Probably well, wouldn't go with a light wash. No. Yeah. Especially when you're unfamiliar with an area because, yeah. you know, you want to tread lightly. It's always best to play a little bit safe. Yeah. Exactly. So that's safe, but not at all. It's safe, yeah. but like you are absolutely, like I wouldn't walk in today and be like, well, she chose the safe option. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want it. So that looks great. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right, so, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my stupid presentation here. Um, so the other looks that we have here are, can you pull them up? Oh, thanks. Yeah. So, um, I mean, for sure, any of the tropical wool pants here. I mean, I literally brought all three to Paris with me and that's pretty much the only bottom I wore other yeah. than the active knit. Um, I love the dark stone because yeah. I think 
know, you can really play with color in a more non-traditional way. Like, I would honestly probably wear this together. Yes. Um, I think it really takes on kind of the undertone yeah. of whatever color you're wearing. Yeah, because I think even with the matching blazer in that, mm -hmm. and just like one of the chalky drape tops totally. or something, totally. you are so put together for the event. Absolutely. But that morning, if you were running down and having coffee at the hotel yeah, or whatever, absolutely. this Fine. sweater and totally. that. And they perfect. definitely serve the purpose of like, you know, they're fundamentals, they're tweeners, so yeah. like they really do work for those in-between moments. Yeah. And you know, they really, they work for work, they work for play, they work for dinner. So the thing is, is all of you who wrote to me about what to wear to these business conferences, the reason why you wrote to me was not because you don't really know what you could wear. All of you know, right? Like, come on, we all know what a suit looks like. So the reason that you wrote is because you don't want to wear just a suit. So what I'm really challenging all of you guys to think about when you are trying to outfit yourself is don't just think like, okay, I don't want to wear a regular suit. Think like, I don't want to look like them. And figure out who them is and what it is that is not attracting you to the way that they look. So for me, I'm thinking, okay, if I'm going to go to this conference, people are going to look boring in my mind. And then whether or not this is true is irrelevant right now. This is about your perceptions and what you are fighting against. So you're thinking, I don't want to look boring. I don't want to look uptight. I want to stand out and make an impression, but not because I was the girl in the Barbie doll pink dress. Totally. So, you know, if you write out in your head at least the things that you don't want to look like, then this is where you employ your antonym. Do you think, well, like, what are the opposites of these things and how can I work them in? And I think all of you are thinking, the way that you've described these things, that these are like really stuffy environments. So what is like unstuffy but appropriate is this pan. I love this pan. I think we've really been talking a lot today about fabrication. Mm -hmm. And I think taking traditionally like menswear suiting fabric yeah. and then creating a new shape, this is a cellar shape with the cargo pockets, it still works for like that business function, but I think it feels a bit more individual, which is what yeah. we're trying to do in this situation, but still appropriate. Like I think Amy's blazer with a matching can would be just as appropriate for this. Like you're, you're definitely wearing something that no, no one is going to be like you're not dressed for yes. this. Exactly, and I think too is as you'll see, like Sarah again, as she's wearing the sweater that is coming out soon, but every thing that we've held up color-wise oh, yeah. has gone with this sweater. So, you know, you think about, too, the colors that you're packing. These odd, like, acidic colors, these strange colors, they're the ones that, like, you, you might view them as so specific, but they don't. They go with everything. But the other reason that they go with everything is when we do these strange colors, we tend to really do them in a body that is so overly simplified exactly so if this had had like a big strange sleeve on it yeah. and the whole okay now you're getting specific they're very i would say that's always something that we're like remain extremely true to is that we're always going to do like that familiar that, that familiar silhouette that you guys know and are comfortable with and what we're going to experiment with is the color or like that icky mohair yeah, so when we talk about like bigs and pigs, remember bright colors either needs to be an icky or glossy or sculptural. And this is like just kind of icky and strange enough. If this were like a lovely cotton knit. I feel like yeah. um, so another item that is so chic for these events is just something like a traditional blue pencil skirt here. And if you wear it like all navy, the way that I am, or um, when I was in Paris, I was wearing it with this rich brown um, button up that we had. Mm -hmm. But what's great is this is where, don't forget to employ the whole one ton or none and the whole idea of like some of these accessories to make a statement. So if I'm wearing the blue sweater here and the blue skirt, then just something like this white shoe is enough of a statement 
that, uh, I mean, honestly, if some of the way you guys have described some of these events, someone might be like, oh, she's too creative for my taste and style, but they're registering that you are a creative person. Totally, and that, does, and that has nothing to do with like your yeah. credibility within yeah. the work within like the workplace. Like this is a hump, just a sling back. Like yeah. you're not flopping around. It just so happens to be white, which yeah. is giving that focal point in one ton or none. So we talked about this last week when we were in Paris, using your shoes as tools rather than. I mean, yes, you have to be drawn to something. Yes, you have to love it but really think about how am I going to use it as a tool. So every time, if you've got a lot of those classic colors in your closet, if you wear a lot of dark head to toe, then the white shoe is really, really important for lifting things up. And that's why, like for me, when I was dressing for Paris especially, I, mean, you, I didn't do the brown. No, you only but, wore white, like you yeah. only wore white shoes. You wore that, you wore the little, you wore the sneakers and the little camera. I was wearing a lot of dark, so I yeah. found myself wanting the but friction of the white. It was, like, it was like very refreshing. You yeah. still felt exactly like you. It was just like what you were craving at that moment. But here, with um, what you're wearing, that it's like two, and <laughs> like you're like pulled away. So this is where like you would want to play with the kitsch of a totally. sandal, something dark, something brown. So using things for different purposes. This was the good ick and strange to wear with the black denim. This is with these chic and tailored pieces. Um, so again, in your closet, having the mixture of the fabrications is key. And also when you're traveling, having like the perfect, it's so easy to throw in like a perfect, not a perfect belt, but just a few belts like they don't take up room in the suitcase but they're game changers they're game like changers. it's really they, the, you can literally like put it in your purse in your back yeah. pocket like well like whatever. even if i were in these meetings or something and someone was like oh you have to stay like one extra day then it's even like i'm not gonna take this off no i'm just gonna switch it around sorry i'm just gonna go from back to front um but even like if I had to go for one extra day and I'm like out of clothes or something, just simply like turning around a cardigan, even like if I have loafers and a blazer and then I put the belt on with it, like all of a sudden you're just polished up. So it's using, you know, it's not like a whole new outfit. You don't have to go run out and buy something new. So what I wore for breakfast every day in the hotel now just having these little pieces that kind of dress things up for all of these work environments, that's what does it. So all of this stuff where you're going to a more posh environment, you need to feel like yourself, but you want to be creative and you're around judging people and there's a reason for it. Um, focus on your fabrications. Focus on, I would definitely say of the one ton or none, it's either one or none and I would not do ton. Mm -mm. Save that for when you really, when you've already signed the deal. Um, and use your clothing as tools here. Totally. Okay. All right. So, what is next? Um, oh, this is a good one. That's the capital S. Yes, I feel like you. This is not very with good. The stupid capital F is what it actually says. <laughs> yeah, sorry, not with the stupid. Okay, the title of this one is Fashion. <laughs> fashion but not with the stupid capital F and what we mean is like this is where you are going to be doing something fashiony maybe you're going to be hanging out with some fashiony friends but if it's you're like you're fashion week wait ugh, maybe something gonna work but it's like when you want to show up and you're like oh this whole thing like but you, know, you don't want to sound like that asshole that's like what just yeah. like threw it on exactly exactly and but the thing is that you won't sound like an asshole because it becomes true it really does so this is when you have some of those key pieces in your closet that work for lunch with friends who are in fashion but need to uh, walk there so you need to be comfortable you are going to a Christmas party everyone is so casual I want to be more fun you're going to an engagement party in a Chicago restaurant I know 
and I have a visual on that because I just did that a few weeks ago. Uh, you're going to a work holiday party, but in an office, brunch. Um, this was interesting. You're facilitating a workshop to adults, and then you're going to a variety comedy show. It's going to be interesting. And then, um, this is a flex. My daughter is a chef in New York City, and she is hosting a pop-up with other creatives in Brooklyn. Where is it at? When is her invite <laughs> coming? Okay. Well, I mean, Oh, but wait, no, no, this isn't this group. Sorry, wrong group. Yeah. Uh, no, this was a pro plate. So this is a pro blazer, furry uh, pump, uh, and hair. Like, that's not a camera up. Okay. So this is something that like, if you've just got those key items, like you're going and you don't want to look like you're trying too hard. The furry, the furry pumps. The Bella pumps. This is like the tool in your closet that if I were going to brunch with friends who were all fashiony, just wearing like, Sam jeans, a denim shirt, and then those pumps. It's all you need, yeah. it's all you need. Now the reason why I brought these out was because I just saw that the St. Simon's Island store had a post mm -hmm. that they have these in all the colors, um, not all the sizes, but I think Sarah from our office, she wore these at the runway show in the, like the blue or the burgundy, I can't remember what, but she looked so good because she was like working the show, but it was like, was she wore the blue? She looks adorable. Okay, so oh, this, like you have, the, oh, not you, sorry. I was like. <laughs> You're like, I'm right here, you can just. No, but I was like, you wasn't. No, no, though. sorry, intern yeah, said yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm um, looking at Brynn being like. <laughs> Help me out, I'm right here, I can answer her. Okay, so, and the key thing is, the way that you stay fashion, not a capital F, is you're not doing this and this. No way. Right, like this. This, I love these pieces, but like together, all of a sudden you're Emily in fashion. Oh. Emily in Paris. Like these are, for me, these are both half to halves, and like two half to halves don't make a right. Exactly, exactly. So can you throw this on with your jeans? Like just, the, even like, the blazer, oh, the blazer, oh no, the blazer. Uh, the blazer, sorry. Good, but it's one or the other, yeah. and not that one. So this is one that like, if you were running out to dinner, brunch, or wherever, everything else is kind of played down, and then yeah. it's just that one moment. So what happens here is the, um, the reason why you guys write all these questions is there is a massive concern and focus from all of you, and I get it, on not appearing like you're trying too hard. And I think it's because, and it's not about you want to be disrespectful or anything, but it's more that like, that whole vibe that comes with Feeling. Tina Tryhard, like, yeah. it's not a good thing, right? So this is like fashion that you can wear, black jeans, sneaker, anything. So those key elements in your closet, this is where we lean into our earrings a lot as well. It's like you can have on something so simple like this, and then if my hair is pulled back and I have on a big strange earring, then that's enough. Yeah. Done. And this is yeah. So you're not going to feel not like yourself, but you're also going to feel like, oh, you know, there's a little extra there. Well, and I even brought, um, like when we were in Paris, we picked up this belt. She thought it was fake Chanel, so she was like yeah, the, the, the vintage it. salesperson. But I think that like, if you take that off, but like if you were going out to lunch with friends and instead of, if you come closer, like instead of the black belt, if you just did this, and then a pair of black sides, like again, stop right there. So there's probably a new rule around this, but when you want to be fashion, but chill, but it is a fashion moment, just focusing on one, one key fashion element and let the rest like take it down a notch. It's like the one to nine. Yeah. Like fashion like, accessories. Exactly. Like, accessories, but you know. Um, exactly. All right, cool, thank you. Okay, now that next group, um, that next group is, um, which, see that's so good for the work holiday party. Like this, for anyone who's got like the office party, this is perfect. You can wear something so simple to the office, but then like this is the thing over your desk. That, 
because I, you know, I used to work at American Express, and it was like, when there was the office party, I mean, you had people coming in, like, you were like, like, sequins, oh like, God. up and down. I was like, damn. So, I don't know, I just, and damn, like, not, I didn't want to be there. <laughs> yeah. So, the next category was, um, it requires you to be festive, but you don't want to look like a tree decoration. You want a bit of a formal vibe mixed with party and creativity. And the top considerations here are a bit classic and creativity, though. So here is um, an office party, but it's not in the office. It's at a bowling alley. So you're kind of oh, like, wow. <laughs> Threw through that into the mix. Here. Buried the lead on that one. <laughs> I know. What, who did that? Um, and then um, here is a, uh, that group right there is for those other events. Yeah. Um, so this one is a formal company party. Uh, these are winter holiday parties in New York. Um, this is a beauty pageant in Tokyo. Wow. Um, and this is a friend's graduation party at a pretty fancy restaurant. So let me look at the um, winter velvet suit. Do we have that? Okay. So this is perfect for that. So this one is coming up, guys. And this, we have a Stella pan in this as well. But someone stole it, so we don't have it. And I did not steal it. I promise. I promise. Um, but... This is perfect because it is one of those things like it really is just so festive and interesting. But, um, you know, you and this is where you're going to go a little more full on. I'm going to wear this with the Stella pan and I'm going to give like a whole oh, yeah. chic go outfit. Totally. Go and I mean, on. nothing screams holiday party like velvet does. Like it's yeah. definitely in and out. You are not heading into spring. Like, yeah. you're not heading into spring in this. Like but you are going, you're party hopping, your social calendar is packed, yeah. and this is the blazer to do it. Like, you could definitely wear this with a black Sam jean yeah. and a black bodysuit, and that would completely just give it a different vibe, maybe for the bougie bowling alley. Yeah, bougie <laughs> That's what it said. The bougie I'm just bougie. quoting the, the <laughs> Yes, it does say it bougie, bougie bowling alley. It says bougie, and there's a little um, And then I have not been to many um, beauty pageants, in Tokyo, but I have been to one in Georgia. God help us if like they're, they're the same. Uh, yes, but anyway, so go full on, have fun, wear like a full on velvet suit here, but make it relax. So this is where you can trust us to have done the one that's relaxed. And then, actually I'm gonna have uh, our friend over there model this one. Again, she's you're our new like coat model here. Because you got on a dark shirt underneath yeah. it, and I think it's going to look pretty with that shirt. I didn't mean to use that word pretty, but. Uh, and then we also, like heavy demand here, we have coming back the tuxedo blazer. And then we've shown it here with the Celia drape short. So what's really nice about this is, um, actually just the blazer is fine, yeah. So what's really nice with Daphne is just going to show you how the blazer looks. And uh, we're not doing it here with all the bottom, but this is like just, you it's can gorgeous. see how pretty. I love it. Like, yeah. And so I always describe things in my different ways, but like how would you describe the feeling so that people can know what that is like? Uh, the texture. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just gorgeous texture. Like you want to put it on. Like that's. That's the main thing, like, it's, it's cozy, but it's refined. So like, you can imagine the Stella pan I know, with it. No, like, I can't wait for that. It's like, so, and so I think the key for these types of events is that they have got, like, all the festiveness of being fully dressed up, head to toe, Stella pan in the blazer, or the tuxedo in the cilia drape short here. So you've got the full-on look going on, but the styles are so chilled out. So these are about the luxury fabrications, the over, you know, a bit of a capital F in terms of fashion, 
but the styles themselves are just completely, completely effortless. Um, so, no, this is thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, and our second to last group here is um, this is a full on proper dressy event. Like you're going somewhere. And these are people who are going to an evening gala and they want to feel chill, but they're in a modern gown. Let me just tell you. <laughs> Guys, this is it. Right here. So good, right? <laughs> um, no, you're going to see. Um, this is the. I don't want to say. Oh, just say that. Four ply silk. Four ply silk. Wow. The so bias good. dress. This is a really lovely, like, ivory color. It looks really luxe. Um, I just want to say, I am wearing this dress with this sweater and I know what you're thinking like you seem crazy but immediately like wrapping a sweater around your waist or tying it over your shoulders immediately immediately just chills out this dress absolutely and so when you're going to see with the winter collection this is another one it's a strapless long gown and then and I hate that word gown but then it has this shrug and long sleeves it, I mean, it's so good. it is so, so good, good. And then you have this. What we really wanted to make here is we really wanted to give the answer of what does, that's not the front. No, I know, I'm trying the back. <laughs> and here's an open neckline. Um, design. Tracy really wanted that. She's going there, man. Um, but we really did want to address what do you wear to a gala when you are not the one who's like pirouetting down the red carpet. You're not like stomping down the red carpet and you do want to be effortless but it is a red carpet right so this is where this long dress with this sculptural cutout detail it has all the ease but it is bona fide appropriate for a red carpet this is bona fide appropriate for a red carpet and all of this yeah. What's great is, then if you think about the things in your closet as tools, this is where I do not wear a fur to these events. Yeah. I think, beyond other reasons, I think a fur can add, it's like, and it add, it's either like you're trying to do, like, tannin bombs, or it right. makes you look like a hundred years older than you are. Like, I would look like the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> so, having just, this is where, like, it really pays to have a good trench coat. Mm -hmm. Because the coat that you wore with like sneakers in the rain last week in Central Park or wherever is also the one that is the perfect, chic, effortless cover-up to your like evening moment. And then one other thing that gives a very chill vibe, you guys are going to fucking freak about, is, I'm just going to tell you, <laughs> no, you're going to freak. We did the... Um, the boot here in black satin. So it's in a black stretch satin. So to me, to be able to wear the lower heel, have this whole vibe and just be so chill with I your mean, black satin. Any of these dresses with that shoe, I would, be like, I, I would be like, wow, I didn't think of that. Wow. 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 That's it, that's all oh. we got. <laughs> yeah, and you know what, we have a whole other group, but it's not gonna do it justice to oh, try and get into it right now. Oh, you were like, and I was peace out anyway. No, so, no, I was uh, kidding. Um, so I think that we can end it here, but I'm going to summarize because happy Matt's over here, like ready to all like, turn it off. Like last. <laughs> out of here, peace out. Um, but okay, guys, I hope that this was helpful. But again, to help you problem solve on your own, don't just think about like events in a silo, getting dressed. Really think about how do you want to feel at that event? What are the stereotypes of that event that are keeping you from getting dressed? Because none of you guys, with the exception of the person who was like hiking in the Arctic and then having like lunch on a boat, and one of you was going to a regalia in Saint-Tropez in October, those, okay, require knowledge of weather, what do people really wear to those places? Yeah. Like, I get it. But 99% of your questions were around very common activities. So really think about what it is that is off-putting to you about them right now, how it is you want to dress, 
go and mine your wardrobe that you have because I would say a lot of it, if you have been shopping appropriately over the last two years, which I hope you have if you've been watching and listening, <coughs> then I bet you have... <coughs> Can you hit it your <laughs> Wait, I, I do. My not second. sponsored, but we love it. This is really good. It's really good. It really has me jacked up and wired, though, like, but in a good way. But anyways, so um, think about it is, think about how you don't want to look. Employ your antonyms to figure out how you do want to look. Lots of texture. Appropriate colors. I mean, it, the shit is not new yeah. at this point, but those... But those are, are, and so are those, so. They're really good. They're so good, oh my God. Okay, all right, Matt, fun. <laughs> turn us off. Do your thing. Say a nice Wait, goodbye. Wait, come say goodbye. Come say goodbye. Thank you for coming thank on. Thank you, thank you. And Happy just another you. example of random people that we've met through DMs, and then that's the first That's the real name of this it's so nice. Thank you. Bye, guys. And we.